It's a great honor to be at this hearing. I'm president of the Equal Justice Society. We're an organization that is transforming the nation's consciousness on race through law, social science, and the arts. In August 1619, 400 years ago, 20 enslaved Africans landed at Jamestown. In order to sell, rape, and beat these Africans, white Americans, and I know none of you own slaves, had to see us as less than human. From the beginning of our country's inception through the Constitution, the Founding Fathers knowingly and consciously embraced slavery and white supremacy. When I went to law school, lawyers were heroes. There were no lawyer jokes. The lawyers were defending radicals. And so I thought being a lawyer was a wonderful profession. Well, I get to Northwestern in the fall of 67. That April, my freshman year, Dr. King was assassinated. I got involved in the anti-war movement, the feminist movement. I became student body president at Northwestern. I ended up debating the Vice President of the United States. And it's this type of, of just picking up on what allegedly I said instead of really studying what I said that, that really disturbs me about your whole process of, of going about and talking around the country. You're doing us a great disservice because you're making people afraid of their own children. I was asked to apply for a job at a place called the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights five times and I said no four times. I felt like the universe was trying to tell me something because it kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. So I finally decided to go work there. Worked there for 26 years, sued the San Francisco Fire Department to bring women into the department. We got a million dollars in damages for black men who were the victims of racial harassment. We sued to desegregate the San Francisco School District. We opposed Proposition 209, which eliminated the use of race in college admissions. We're completely ahistorical as a nation. In 1876, there was a deal around the Electoral College, the hayes tilden Compromise. What happened is the federal presence, which was in the South, to protect the newly freed people was withdrawn. You saw the rise of the Ku Klux Klan, you saw lynchings, you saw all kinds of things going on. Similarly, with Trump, his Justice Department isn't protecting anybody. You see the withdrawal of federal support for anti-discrimination. So there are parallels. The Panthers were here in Oakland. And they were remarkable, showing up with guns uh, on the steps of the Sacramento Capitol. And all of a sudden, open carry was taken away in California. As important as that, they also had a free breakfast program and taught kids. So they were trying to make sure that our community was taken care of. Even in the midst of the attempt to degrade us and humiliate us, we rose, we soared, we were, we are excellent. Despair is a tool of oppression. And many people think that the current moment is gonna go on forever and ever and ever. What I think is that my enslaved ancestors probably thought that too. Slavery ended. This current ugliness will end, but it will only end if we fight. I think about what Maya Angelou said, I am the hope and dream of the slave. There's no way an enslaved person would have thought I'd be up here in this office running an organization. I can call the President of the United States a racist and not be flogged. I once said that if I had a tattoo it would say born to sue. I can sue somebody, make you come to my office and answer questions. And if I'm skillful enough and work with other good lawyers, I can get a judgment against you. I really do call on my ancestors every day to keep me going because they could not imagine someone like me. I've often said my superpower is the ability to disarm people. I'm very honest, but I don't come at you wanting to smack you. I come at you with honesty and love if I can. Many of you out there watching this are in positions of power and you've got to take risks. People took risks to eliminate slavery, to get women the right to vote. And so we've got to use our power and privilege to make things better. We're in the fight of our lives, which we can win, but only if everybody steps up.